Light and peace in Je Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Son divine, of God the Father's deathless face, O image of the light sublime that fills the heavenly dwelling place, O Son of God, the source of life, praise is your Let us give thanks to God our Father, always and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, praise be the Lord our God, ruler of the universe who led our ancestors in the faith by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night and prepared a lamb for his anointed. Light up our darkness, O God, by the light of your Christ. May this word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are full of living kindness for your whole creation and we your creatures glorify you father son and holy spirit
in eternal splendor before the dawn of light on earth I have begotten you in eternal splendor before the dawn of light on earth I have begotten you The Lord will send from Zion your scepter of power, rule in the midst of your foes. The Lord has sworn an oath, he will not change. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. He shall drink from the stream by the wayside, and therefore he shall lift up his head. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In eternal splendor, before the dawn of light on earth, I have begotten you. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for holiness. They will be satisfied. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for holiness. They will be satisfied. Riches and wealth are in his house. Injustice stands firm forever. A light rises in the darkness for the upright. He is generous, merciful, and just.
He has no fear of evil news. With a firm heart, he trusts in the Lord. With a steadfast heart, he will not fear. He will see the downfall of his foes. The wicked sees and is angry grinds his teeth and fades away. The desire of the wicked leads to doom. As it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Are they who hunger and thirst for holiness, they will be satisfied. Praise God, all you who serve him, both great and small. Alleluia. Praise God, all you who serve him, both great and small. Alleluia. Salvation, glory, and power to our God. Alleluia. His judgments are honest and true. Alleluia. Alleluia. Sing praise to our God, all you his servants. Alleluia. All who worship him reverently, great and small. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord, our all-powerful God, is King. Alleluia. Let us rejoice, sing praise, and give him glory. Alleluia. Alleluia. The wedding feast of the Lamb has begun. Alleluia. And his bride is prepared to welcome him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. 
Alleluia. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise God, all you who serve Him, both great and small. Alleluia. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and to it the kings of the earth will bring their treasure. During the day, its gates will never be shut, and there will be no night there. The treasure and wealth of the nations will be brought there. And the angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of prophetic spirits, sent his angel to show his servants what must happen soon. Behold, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. I approach the end of my assignment here in the Diocese of Davenport. I suppose it's appropriate that the scripture reading for this end of the day Vespers service is from the end of the book of Revelation. Last words are very important. We heard in the passage from Revelation about a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven entire biblical story of salvation history comes to its climax with the arrival of the heavenly Jerusalem. The last words in the book of Revelation and hence in the Bible itself is the prayer, come Lord Jesus. This is a response to Jesus promising three times in the previous verses, behold, I am coming soon. This prayer is echoed in, um, as, as, as we know, many Advent hymns such as O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Christians have 
prayed this prayer from the earliest days. In fact, it is the oldest Christian prayer that we know, not counting the Lord's Prayer. St. Paul quotes the original Aramaic version, Maranatha, in, um, in 1 Corinthians. And so, in um, the mystical marriage, the bride of Christ, the church, is waiting in joyful hope for her bridegroom, Jesus, to come. As we live in these in-between times, in between the first and the second comings of Christ, the Spirit prompts the church to call out to Christ to come, to come back, to return. And Jesus' response is, yes, I am coming soon. And we respond, amen, come, Lord Jesus. And our focus this year as a, as a diocese on um, welcoming and belonging, we call out to everyone, come and, and join us in our communal prayer, come, Lord Jesus. Come, especially those of you on the peripheries. Come, migrants, you who are divorced and remarried, prisoners, LGBTQ persons, young people and others who feel lonely and isolated. Come, those of you who are grieving, disabled, depressed, anxious, afraid. Come, and together we will cry out, come, Lord Jesus. In our diocesan Laudato Si action plan, we issue a cosmic call. Come, Lord Jesus, come to heal our earth and the poor who are most detrimentally affected by climate change. Come, Lord Jesus, to our retired priests whose material needs will be, be met in part by upon this rock funds so they can focus their attention on preparing to say, I am ready when you come. Come, Lord Jesus, to our seminarians who also will be assisted financially by the capital campaign so they can focus their attention on discerning whether Jesus is calling them to lead the people of God in pleading, come, Lord Jesus. At home, in the domestic church, and in our parish schools and faith formation programs, we help young people come to know Jesus, and we teach them to call out to him, come, Lord Jesus, now and at the end of time. And finally, in the Eucharist, the source and summit of our Christian lives, the foretaste of the heavenly banquet, we beg you, Jesus, come, come back, come back soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.
I say to you, there is great rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. I say to you, there is great rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his handmaid in her lowliness. For behold, from this day, I say to you, there is great rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. Let us complete our evening prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the welfare of all churches and the unity of the human family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For Bishop Thomas, as he concludes his ministry here and prepares to shepherd the church in Dubuque, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For this diocese, for every community, and for all those living in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the safety of travelers, the recovery of the sick, the care of the destitute and the release of prisoners. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For a peaceful evening, and a night free from sin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For a Christian end to our lives, and for all who have fallen asleep in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and 
bless the doors, I'd like to just say a few words. I invite you to please be seated. So I'm not, like probably a lot of you, I'm not good with the goodbyes. I find it hard and difficult. And so I'm just gonna share with you a few words of farewell that really struck me this week as I was praying the office of the reading, of, of readings. So this is, these are a part of um, the, uh, the, uh, the office of readings from um, a homily by St. John Chrysostom. Um, we celebrated his memorial on Wednesday, on September 13th. He is much more eloquent than I am. He's, go, he's, refer, he's his nickname is the Golden Mouth. So I'm just going to steal a few of his words that really spoke to me about my situation. I always say, Lord, your will be done. Not what this fellow or that would have me do, but what you want me to do. That is my strong tower, my immovable rock, my staff that never gives way. If God wants something, let it be done. If he wants me to stay here, I'm grateful. But wherever he wants me to be, I am no less grateful. Where I am, there you are too. And where, where you are, I am. For we are a single body, and the body cannot be separated from the head, nor the head from the body. Distance separates us, but love unites us, and death itself cannot divide us. For though, my, for though my body die, my soul will live and be mindful of my people. You are my fellow citizens, my fathers, my brothers. My sons, my limbs, my body, you are my light, sweeter to me than the visible light. For what can the rays of the sun bestow on me that is comparable to your love? The sun's light is useful in my earthly life, but your love is fashioning a crown for me in the life to come. Before we go our separate ways, there is one last matter that needs our attention. New doors have been installed here at the cathedral, and it is right that they should be blessed. Let us pray fervently to the Lord that all who enter this cathedral through these doors would be welcomed as Christ, who is both our shepherd and our sheep gate. May those who come here to hear the word of God and celebrate the sacraments heed the voice of the shepherd and grow in faith and love. As we make our way to the doors, please turn and face the back of the church.
We praise you, Lord God, Father, Father all holy. You sent your Son into the world to gather by the shedding of his blood those whom the destructive power of sin had scattered. You sent him to unite us all in the one sheepfold. He is the good shepherd. He is the door through which those who follow him enter and are safe. Go in and go out to find pasture. Grant that those who enter this church with confident faith in him may persevere in the teaching of the apostles, in the breaking of the bread, and in unceasing prayer, and so be built into the heavenly Jerusalem. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the, feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us bow our heads to the Lord. May, may God the Father Almighty bless and keep us. Amen. Amen. May Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, graciously smile upon us. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, our Lord and, and giver of life, Grant us peace. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.